Hello, this is Linda from Jewelry Maker, and this time I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful Marla Star necklace. Um, this kit, Moonchild, is absolutely stunning. It contains some lovely Eslon thread, some beautiful Swarovski jet four mil bicones, some stunning hematite, both in a plain finish and in a fac faceted finish, and some gorgeous rutilated black quartz. Now, you may or may not know that Marla necklaces are made with a number of beads in mind, which we'll talk about um, a little bit later. They are, um, Marla necklaces, bracelets, etc. can be um, decorated where this, the sort of the tassel part is um, in basically anything that you would like. Um, but we'll come to the, the reasons why uh, a little bit later on. Now to make this tassel, which is what I'm going to show you first, and then we'll talk through the neckline piece in as much as how many numbers and where they sit um, later on. So to make the tassel, if you've got a tassel maker, that's great. If you haven't, then a simple way of making a tassel is just by taking two pieces of card, this is just off an ordinary cardboard box, and have two pieces the same size now this here designates the length obviously if it's shorter then again that will designate the length and it's entirely up to you what length and how chunky you want to make your tassel now to begin making it you pop your two pieces of cardboard together and then taking your cord just anchor it down with your thumb at the very base here of the cardboard and just wind around, not too tight, not too loose, just a little bit of tension. Keep winding it around, keeping it fairly parallel if you can, um, and just keep going until you have got the designated width that you want your tassel to be. Once you've got that designated width, then just keep going backwards, retracing your steps, and that then will give you the chunkiness of the tassel so you just retrace your steps in that direction and then retrace your steps in the opposite direction and um, do that as many times as you think you need to I did about 30 for my tassel um, and that was adequate but it's up to you how fine or how thick you want to make your tassel now the next step I'll move on to one I started a little while ago is we have got all of our thread wound on and now it's a matter of trying to, to pull together our tassel top. Now to do this, if you just pinch together your threads, just raise them up a little bit, take another little piece of thread. Now this little piece of thread here needs to go underneath, if you can get them all up and out off of that cardboard and pop that thread so it peeks out underneath. Raise that up to the very top um, of the cord here and then just create a simple overhand knot. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way. It's just a simple overhand knot. Lots of tension on, this, um, on, on the knot here. That's obviously the first part of the knot. Get lots of tension on that and then if you've got somebody to help you hold that down, that's great. But other than that, just keep that tension there and tie over one more time. So basically what we've got is what we call a granny knot. Come through and again, lots of tension on the top of that card there. Okay, now just move that away um, to the side a little because we'll need to sort that out later. And then what we've got to do now is we've got to form the tassel top, um, which we need to do when we've removed the tassel from the card now. There's two ways of doing this. You can remove the, the tassel straight off of the card now and then cut. I just prefer to keep it a little bit tamed and take my scissors and just to go through. Pushing my scissors through between the two lots of card and chopping away. Like so, removing the cardboard, and we've got what basically resembles um, Wurzel Gummidges 
hair style or mine when I get up in the morning. And the next thing to do is just to find um, this little um, tie that you've just done and pull that over to keep that central. That's a little bit loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tighten that up somewhat and put one more knot over the top of that. You can put a little drop of glue or nail varnish on it. But at this moment in time, resist that because we might need to move that knot slightly at a later time. So this is a thread here that's formed the knot. So I'm just going to pull in the other direction and create the tassel top. Now to create the tassel top, you basically need to smooth down your tassel and give a lot of tension there because this is where we need to tie. So take another length of thread and wind it around a couple of times. Okay, and then again, keeping it tamed and in place, tie another overhand granny knot. Okay, I do apologise this isn't an overhead iPad, but basically it's any port in a storm, I'm afraid. There, no. We tie that nice and tight. Now, don't be tempted to um, trim that off too short because we are actually going to uh, remove that completely at some point later on. Now, the next thing is to pop on, and excuse me, I'm going down onto the floor to pick it up, um, with the bicones. I've threaded on to a 0.4 length of wire. I've threaded on five of the Strosky bicones and with the corresponding um, there should be five little balls on there. I apologise, there's only the four. I've lost one. Um, and the next thing to do is to form the little neck um, decoration around the tassel. Now I will just trim this off very slightly and remove that one up a bit. Now if you take the wire and pop it into like a u-shape and then place the wire underneath the tassel where you've just made um, that little neck bring it up to the um, the neck of that tassel top there keeping this tamed and out of the way and then just simply once you've got that around, and I've got, as I say, I think the five of each bead really is adequate for my uh, size of tassel. You may need to use more, you may need to use less. Uh, making sure that they're all sitting side by side on the wire. And then simply getting your thread tamed is just twist the tassel pinching the wire, twisting the tassel, and then you are, you're forming your little tassel neck, okay? So we can push that up somewhat. You can take a lot more time over this than I can. Making sure that that's nice and tight, that wire. And again, push so that you're making that tassel top a little bit chunkier, just pull or push up those bicones so they're nice and tight. Now, in a little while, um, when we come to sort of finishing off the tassel, we can cut this here with our scissors because the bicones on the wire will hold the tassel top in place for you. I'll leave that on for now, just in case. Right, now the next thing to do is to pop on. Um, now I've used a, I have made with the bicones, a little beaded bead, which is a 12 bead bead, which you will find demonstrations online for, you will find also on our website, there's a demonstration I'm sure of how to create a beaded bead. Um, essentially there are 12 beads ladder weaved together and then just brought up and knotted together. Um, and that is going to form the top uh, little decoration to go on the tassel. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move that out of the way. I am going to get myself another couple of little jet crystals. Because I'm going to need those in a minute. And you see where you have this notch? You see the notch on the top here? What we're going to try and do now is to sort of pull that around and try and push that knot inside the tassel top. Once you've got it in place and it's quite happily sitting inside, you can then trim off these lengths here. Continue to push the little bit of excess in, excuse me, and then what we need to do now is to get the beaded bead fixed onto the top of the tassel. So, beaded bead, and I'm going to take an eye pin, but you can make one if you, um, if you don't have any eye pins, then you can make one, it's just a simple loop on top of a um, 0.6 gauge wire. Now I'm going to open my eye pin in exactly the same way as I would open a jump ring. In other words, towards me, okay? Then I'm going to hook this eye pin onto this loop here that's tying the tassel together. So that just goes into there and then close up. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is just so that my beaded bead isn't too squishy. Normally, if I wanted to make that into a pendant, I would now use three extra beads. But because I want it to sit on top of the tassel top, I'm actually going to use just two extra beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on one of the bicones onto my eye pin so that it's just sitting there nicely on top of the, um, the tassel top. And then I'm going to pop on there's always a squishier part to a beaded bead. Um, so if you can't get it it's to actually go on there and get the bead through in the first place, then you'll find that there will be another place. And then all you need to do is get that bead that you just popped on inside that beaded bead. And you'll hear it clicking. Then, once you've done that, see that bead has gone inside now. It's no longer there. It's magicked away. We'll push that down. We'll take one more bicone and pop that onto our eye pin. I can find the hole. There it is. And let that just sit nicely on top of the bead. Taking your flat nose pliers, get a little tension and push down slightly on your um, little blackberry bead here. And with the very tip of your flat nose pliers just push through 90 degrees okay and then with your cutters cut off about a centimeter from the beaded bead and with your round nose pliers we're just going to form a nice simple loop so about a centimeter down the plier push down raise your arm until it's really uncomfortable, take the plier out, put it back where it fits, and then nudge it all together. Right, now once you have got your beaded bead attached, you can tidy up this neckline here, and then simply cut off very carefully the tie that you put there just to keep it together to keep your tassel together just cut that off and then you've got your tassel forming there now if you tighten that wire somewhat it will pinch in and make your tassel stop top be a little bit more bulky which is what you want and then cut off the residue of the wire on that neckline now to tame this what looks untamable. All you need to do is to twist somewhat and holding it tightly, 
just tie in two different places tie a length of thread about halfway down the tassel once you've got that on go further down the tassel and tie again when it's sat overnight well, or for about 24 hours you can then trim your tassel to um to the length that you want obviously if you want it to retain its length then simply just give it a bit of a haircut there if you want it shorter then obviously go up and do it short now this one i have got some random ones up here so what i would probably do with this one would be to cut here and have a little bit of a shorter tassel but on the original it behaved itself beautifully and as you can see from here it is a very long tassel right now let's get on to the um the marla beads you need to take a long length of your beading thread of choice okay and um the rutilated quartz and the hematite both have very generous threading holes so you don't really need a needle um, although you can use wildfire, you can use fire line, beading thread. Um, uh, there's a lot of threads that will work with this particular, uh, these particular gemstones. First thing to do is to take your tassel and thread that into the centre of your thread. Okay. Now a Marla necklace contains 104 beads plus... I beg your pardon, rewind, it does not contain 104, it contains 108 beads, okay, 108 beads, and it has four extras, now you can see here, these two white rutilated quartz and these two white rutilated quartz here, they're called the marker bead, so it's 108 of these beads that are separated by the marker beads, so all in all, you've got 112 when the, you've got the finished product. Now, the order in which that you place them on is either side of your tassel. You put. You can have any any combination, um, not in numbers, but you can have any combination of bead as long as you have got these numbers and then the marker beads after the specific numbers. So tassels in the centre and then you add seven. I've put seven faceted hematite one side a marker bead with related quartz, 14 of the plain hematite, then a marker with related quartz. And then I've moved, I moved to the other side and repeated that, seven marker, 14 marker. And then it is simply then a matter of on this, on the last marker bead, you are going to put on 66 beads. I put 33 on either side and then I tied at this point a knot. Popped a little bit of glue on it so that's nice and secure. So just to reiterate that, we've got our tassel. We have 7 beads, a marker bead, 14 beads, a marker bead and then 33 up to the top and then a complete mirror image all the way down. So there is 66 in the round at the top, making 112 beads, which is 108 Marla beads and four of the marker beads. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's a beautiful necklace. You can make it in many designs. Just have fun with it. Bye, see you soon.